Today, we are reporting on the phase one trial in just over a thousand people of this vaccine designed by Oxford University and now uh, partnered with AstraZeneca. And the results are good. We're seeing a good safety profile across a large number of people. And very importantly, we're seeing strong immune responses. What does it mean for a potential timeline? What are the next steps? If the immune responses are strong, that suggests that the vaccine is more likely to work. It doesn't prove that it will, but we try and extrapolate from preclinical data, from all the clues we can work out from uh, what we're seeing in the immunological detail. And, and frankly, we're encouraged. In terms of timeline, it doesn't really change that. We said that we were aiming for around about late third quarter, early fourth quarter of this year to get a first read on efficacy, and that's still the goal. But we do need enough cases in our trials to be able to determine whether the vaccine is preventing cases in the vaccinated. Uh, so that's still maybe October time, something like that. Is it also difficult in, in the testing, Adrian, to figure out okay, we know that the fatality rate for younger people is statistically not zero, but it's extremely low. I think the CDC here in the United States of the 121,000 or so pure COVID fatalities, 844 have been under the age of 34. So 0.6%. Uh, statistically, obviously every one of those is a life that we care about. I'm not minimizing any of those. What I'm saying is, are you able to find enough at-risk members of the population who are willing to undergo uh, these vaccine trials? We are not exposing people in the current trial or in any planned trial to more COVID than they would get by natural exposure. There is this idea of deliberately infecting people known as a challenge trial, which is gaining increasing interest from funders and from agencies around the world. But I emphasize that has not started yet. Uh, whether it would be safe, I think it probably would be, is being discussed. And of course, how safe it is depends on how you do it, how low a dose of challenge virus might be needed, and uh, whether you have some treatments available. And in the coming months, that's going to be discussed extensively. And it may be a fast way to getting uh, data on whether the vaccine gives an effect, gives protection in young people, as you say, and very young people would be uh, likely the subjects because they're at a lower risk of severe disease. But that's not what ha what's happening today. Today we're reporting on a large vaccine trial in 18 to 55 year olds in the UK showing that the vaccine looks pretty safe and is very immunogenic, stimulating both arms of the immune system. And is it T cells and antibodies? Absolutely, yes. So this vaccine technology is particularly designed to induce T cells. Some vaccines really only induce antibodies. Ours induces antibodies at good levels, but also T cells measured in various T cell assays. And that's becoming of increasing interest because we observe people who recover from COVID disease and have very, very low antibody levels but some, some detectable T cells. So it looks to many of us as if in natural infection, T cells are contributing to protection. And therefore we'd like to uh, mimic that by vaccination. And that's exactly what we're seeing with this particular vaccine. So what are the next steps? The next steps are to ramp up the numbers in our phase three trials. We are using both a single dose and two doses of the vaccine. It looks as if both give useful immune responses, even though after two doses we see stronger immune responses, and to keep following these individuals and to uh, start trials elsewhere, including very importantly in, in the US, hopefully in the next few weeks. And give us a reason to be optimistic. You know, assuming you guys and your great team are doing all this work and it continues at this pace, you know, what would be sort of a realistic estimate? I don't want you to get ahead of yourself, Adrian. I know we have a long way to go. What would be a realistic estimate of, you know, reasonable distribution of a working vaccine? We've always said that we're aiming to get this vaccine being administered, being used by the end of this year. And because of that, unusually, we've gone to scale at manufacturing with AstraZeneca, with many partners very early on. 
And AstraZeneca have now signed contracts for producing 2 billion doses of this vaccine over the next 12 months. We won't have 2 billion doses by the end of the year, but hopefully we'll have many millions and we'll be able to provide that for at-risk individuals by the end of the year. That's, that's still the target. 